to Star, the Bell Jar is a book based on the author Sylvia Platt's life. It's a college level book rarely read by 8th graders. It's about a 19-year-old college girl named Esther Greenwood who is very smart and very good at writing. When she wins a writing contest sponsored by a magazine company, her and 11 other girls are sent to New York. Having 11 other girls have the same talent she does makes her feel less special. She begins to have a breakdown and she has many attempts of killing herself. She goes home and after when she goes home from the internship, things just get worse. She's placed in various hospitals and she meets people that both help and hinder her problems. The novel's so fascinating because of the strip the descriptive details. Each chapter is described thoroughly and the voice that the book is read in fits every character perfectly. I also think it is amazing because of the book actually mirrors Sylvia Platt, the author's real life. The protagonist of the novel is Esther Greenwood. Esther is a 19-year-old college girl who faces many challenges and has to overcome many obstacles. Mentally, she's not well. Well, she's not happy with herself at all, and she feels like she's not living up to her own expectations. After coming back from an internship in New York, Esther begins not being able to read, eat, sleep, or even write. She's taken to various hospitals, hoping to discover what truly is wrong with her. Along the way, she faces problems with the people she meets in the hospital and boys. Throughout the novel, Esther is just trying to get back to her old self again and become normal. There are also various antagonists in the novel. These are Buddy Willard, Joan, and Mrs. Greenwood. Buddy Willard is a boy that Esther always admired and loved. She always looked up to him and wanted to marry him. Buddy was good-looking, athletic, and very smart. He was coming. He was working to become a doctor. Esther says that she realized that she didn't want to marry him anymore on the day they saw the baby born. She says that he, she realized he was a hypocrite. After this day, she realized that she never wanted to be involved with him again, and she was just about to tell him when he suddenly contracted TB and was sent off to a TB place with other people that had the same thing. Joan is a girl that was one year older than Esther. She went to the prom with Buddy, but expressed she only liked him for his parents, because she never had normal parents. Joan meets up with Esther in the asylum, because she says that she read an article about her. And first, she's very nice to her. After she's moved to a better hospital that Esther moves to later, she's very standoffish, until she hangs herself, and eventually her death actually helps Esther get better. Esther's mom does not really take her illness seriously. She thinks that Esther is choosing to be that way. When Esther tells her mom she will not return to the psychiatrist, Dr. Gordon, her mother says, I knew my baby wasn't like those awful dead people in the hospital. She is always asking Esther what is wrong with her, and Esther doesn't really like that because she doesn't want to blame it on anyone. Esther does not really love her mom or even trust her. The main conflict in the story is all the problems that Esther has to face. She never thinks she is good enough, and after meeting the girls in the internship, in, in the internship, she begins to feel worse. She begins to become crazy, and her illness only gets worse until she's put in the hospital for treatment. She seems to be getting better after a series of hospitals and new doctors. The structure of the novel is very well. The author goes in chronological order to describe the mental illness that Esther has to go through. In the beginning, she is normal, and but as the book progresses, her illness seems to be going downhill until the end of the novel. The author, the author also uses many flashbacks to describe what is happening. According to the book, Esther goes back in time when she accidentally electrocuted herself with her father's lamp to describe how her first shock treatment was. The strengths of the book were the vivid details that helped the reader picture what was actually happening. Also, through the, throughout the book, although Esther was thinking so crazily, the author made it feel like that was the only way of thinking. I also thought it was so, so I th also loved the part that the book actually mirrored real life situation. The weaknesses of the novel were really understanding what Esther was going through and thinking because she was thinking so crazily. Also in the story there are various types of symbolism. The first one is a mirror. In the hospital when Esther is ta wakes up after overdosing on sleeping pills, she asks to see a mirror. When she looks in the mirror, she does not even recognize herself and thinks it's actually somebody else. This symbolizes that she really doesn't even know what she's doing to herself or who she is anymore. The next one is the bell jar. Esther feels as if she is trapped in a glass bell jar and cannot get out. 
It symbolizes her difficulty to connect with everyone else in the outer world. Toward the end of the book, Esther states, The bell jar hung, suspended, a few feet above my head. I was open to the circulating air. This symbolizes that Esther's beginning to feel better and like she's opening up more. Esther's mental illness progresses throughout the novel. First, she experiences it when she comes home from her internship and her mother tells her that she was not accepted into the summer writing course that she applied for. With all these put together, she begins to break down. She does not feel like she's living up to her own expectations and she begins not being able to eat, sleep, read, or write. Her mother takes her to the psychiatrist, Dr. Gordon, who from the start she does not trust or even open up to and knows that she's not going to feel any better after talking to him. Then she is taken to a private hospital paid for by Philomena Genny, who also paid for her scholarship. There she meets Dr. Nolan and immediately she trusts her and opens up to her and little by little at this hospital she begins to get better. Then Joan dies from hanging herself and she immediately like moves on and she's actually getting a lot better. I think that the mental health system is well depicted in the novel. Throughout the novel, the author describes in vivid details what the main character, Esther, is going through. Her mental illness is the main conflict in the story and is described in chronological order of how she had developed and overcame that illness. There are also various types of settings in this story. New York is where the story opens up and this is where Esther's mental illness actually starts. She, began to fe she always felt superior and great about her writing. But when she went to New York and she was upon 11 other girls with the same talent, she felt like she was just like everyone else. She always needed that extra boost and after that she never got it. Then she felt like everyone else and she just kept going downward and belittling, belittling herself. Therefore the setting in New York is where her real conflict began. The public hospital is where Esther is first taken after she comes back from New York. Because they cannot seem, seem to find what's wrong with her, they take her in for shock treatments. These shock treatments do not help her at all and she says that they make her feel terrible. She does not believe that she's improving at this hospital at all. The private hospital is where Esther is ne next taken and is paid for by Philomena Genny. The doctor is very nice to Esther and she immediately trusts the doctor and can tell her anything. When she is taken in for a shock treatment, she's nervous and mad, but just as the doctor promised, it was nothing like the one she had in the public hospital. This hospital helped Esther improve little by little, and eventually she gets better. A woman's role in society in the 1950s was mainly to become a wife and start a family. However, Esther wanted to be a poet. She was nervous about settling down and starting a family because she still wanted to have a career. She thought that if she got married, she would have to stay home all day cook breakfast, then wash over the kids, clean, and then cook dinner. She didn't want to do this because she wanted to actually have a career. Platt was trying, I think that Platt was trying to explain that the woman's role known by most in the 1950s was something Esther did not want to have to do. She wanted to have a job and a career both, but she knew that the, she wanted to have a job and a family both, but she knew that that was probably never going to happen. I do think that Esther is ready to leave the hospital at the end of the novel. According to the story, Esther says that she truly loves Dr. Nolan and trusts her. Although these, although these things seem so normal to us, it was actually showing that she was showing, building trust and friendship was showing that she was improving. I think that the future for Esther is going to be very successful. I think that she'll think, she'll go back and know that she'll ne she never wants to she, she'll think back and know that she never wants to get, go back to where she was and how much she developed and got better. The novel was such an amazing read, but in the beginning it was slow and not really interesting for me like most novels. Toward the middle, it, was, it came, became more action-filled and intriguing, and that's what made me love the book. Therefore, I truly enjoyed The Bell Jar, and I'm so thankful that I got a chance to read it as an 8th grader.